you'll notice that they've been entering their contact information into the chat. So if you have a particular program that you're interested in, that you can follow up and make contact with them. So let's start out. Fozzie, would you start out and then we'll just go one after the other introducing ourselves and what your program is. Yes, Ghazi Abu Hakima, Ghazi Abu Hakima, Asian Studies, Arabic, Chinese, and Japanese. Go right ahead. Andrew Owen. Uh, Andrew Owen, I'm the chair of the classics program. We're the home of uh, Greek and Latin. Camila. Hi, Camila Martin, uh, director of the African American Studies program. Mike. Sorry. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Michael Gomez and I'm the chair of Hispanic Studies. We have Spanish and Portuguese and a whole lot more. Nadia. Hey, good evening. I'm Nadia Vendaño. I'm the director of the Latin American and Caribbean Studies program and we have a major and a minor. Welcome. Yaron. Hi everyone, I'm Yaron. Uh, I'm director of Jewish studies. Uh, we oversee uh, Hebrew instruction at the college and we also have the fastest growing Jewish studies major in the entire country. Scott. Good evening, everybody. My name is Scott Harris. I'm the director of the archeology span program. Malta. Good evening, everybody. My name is Malta Pale. I'm the director of the international studies program. Lisa. Bonsoir et buona sera. So French, Bonsoir. Francophone, and Italian studies. Here we are. Very good, very good. And we have Sean. Sean Morrison is here tonight. I am the Associate Dean of the School of Languages, Cultures, and World Affairs. I'm also a professor in the French department. Now for the highlight of the night, we have a panel of our students emceed by the chair of the German and Russian studies program that I'm pleased to introduce. Morgan Kerner is going to be our MC from here and go ahead and we'll be able to introduce you to some of our students now who are working with us. Morgan. You want to unmute yourself, buddy. Excellent. I'm making it, I'm bringing the Zoom realness tonight. My name's Morgan Kerner. I am the chair of German and Russian studies here at the College of Charleston, and I am your MC. Dr. Johnson will be DJing for me while I MC tonight. So he's working the turntables in the corner. Uh, and I uh, am excited to speak with you all tonight with our guests uh, about the School of Languages, Cultures, and World of Affairs, which is really an amazing place to work. And it's so amazing, as you may have seen in the videos, because it's a place where disciplines combine. No matter what you want to study, if you want to do cool international things, you come to the School of Languages, Cultures, and World Affairs, and you double major or a minor in this school. And we're your gateway to the world where you can do some really amazing things. Now, uh, we're going to be speaking with, we have a panel, a sort of impossible panel of 12 student speakers tonight, representing almost every discipline we have in LCWA. And I put it in the chat for, you, for our guests tonight, because I want to encourage all of you to be really, really active. They're all on the Zoom. So take a look at the chat and the list of names and fields and languages that they're studying. And you can already reach out to them uh, individually using the chat function. Another suggestion I have is to put it on speaker view because if you're looking at the Brady Bunch right now, it will be hard to find the student that's speaking of the 12 students. So that's, uh, that's my advice there and we'll get started. So we have 12 student speakers and we were thinking about how to organize this. We thought, okay, we're gonna, uh, talk about the two main things that really bring students to LCWA, which on the one hand, joy, pleasure, because this is really fun to do international things, to learn languages. And then on the other hand, professional goals. And we'll start with the joy end and slowly move through study abroad and internship possibilities, and then professional goals at the end in groups of three. We're starting with our first group of three. We have a student with us, uh, Sofia Car uh, Carrillo. Uh, Sofia, are you there? Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, you're, you're minoring in Japanese at the College of Charleston and taking Japanese classes here, which we have an amazing, amazing program in Japanese. What have you enjoyed most about studying Japanese at CFC? Although it is a really small department and there's not much of a demand right now, it has been so nice being able to meet everyone, including the professors and the students. And I think the department is a really strong and 
awesome department for the size and for what it's worth. The professors are really amazing. And just being able to learn and grow in this, in my skills of Japanese, it's been just exponentially um, awesome, you know, that that after I'm in my second year. So after two years, we're able to get this far in Japanese. And I do wish there was more of a demand because the department is just awesome. I, I would disagree with you. There was, I watched the numbers. There was a lot of demand for Japanese. It's the highest <laughs> enrolling critical language at the College of Charleston uh, yeah. in the one-on-ones when students come through. Has anything specific been really, what, what sort of things are you working on now? Can you give our, our guests a, a sort of sense of what it's like in the classroom in Japanese 202 right now at the college? Yes, with Japanese 202, we are with Professor Chikuma. He mm -hmm. is the head of the uh, department and he is really great. I only know him and the other professor, not the, there are three, I think. And we we really we're a really close class since there are only two sections and we all get we all got to know each other. So we're basically like a family. We all have fun and we all, you know, get along and it's just really nice being able to uh, speak with each other in practice and just really get along with each other while learning a language. Wonderful, thank you, Sophia. I'm gonna move on to uh, another foreign language at the uh, in LCWA, our amazing Arabic program, uh, and ask Lily Dutton uh, about her experiences learning Arabic at the college. Could you, could you talk a bit for our, for our audience about that? Um, actually, so I originally started out with Japanese. I'm in the same class as Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my professor um, from Asian Studies 101, uh, Professor Gibas, uh, wanted me to study abroad in Egypt. Um, a new uh, program has been offered to study at American University and at the time, I was still taking Japanese, but it seemed like a really interesting opportunity. So I applied and um, I got in, even though it's not happening this year because of COVID, um, I hope to be there next year. So I was still thinking I would be going in the fall. So I enrolled in Arabic 101 and 102 at the University of Minnesota over the summer. So I am currently taking 202 and wow. um, it's, I really, really enjoy Arabic. Same as Sophia said, um, my class is super tight. I know everyone's name. We have a group chat. Our professor is someone that we can talk freely with. It's um, surprisingly, I don't know, I just didn't expect it to happen so quickly since I was like on a Japanese track and then all of a sudden I'm introduced to this whole other language, this whole other region and um, it's been a really gratifying experience. Yeah, we're going to get you to Cairo yet, Lily. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and Lily will be one of our inaugural students on that exchange this fall. Yes, uh, one way or the first. other, one semester or another. That's amazing. That's a wonderful story. And it's also, there's already a through line between what Sophia and Lily are saying about the, the joy of the classroom at the College of Charleston. There's the great support systems in our foreign language classes, and you really get to know the other students very well. Um, I'm going to move on, though, to Margaret Daly, who is majoring in classics at the College of Charleston, and uh, ask, if you, Margaret, if you're there, you could tell us a bit about your experiences learning uh, in, in the classics program. Well, the great thing about classics is that whenever you're an AB major, you can take both Latin and ancient Greek. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the great things that I found studying at the college is that there is an incredibly linguistic focused approach that um, really gets you to understand the grammar of what you're learning. So it's incredibly versatile once you've learned either Latin or ancient Greek to go on and learn another language. Um, like I, for example, I entered the college already having learned a bit of German because I'd lived in Germany for a year. But after I had learned Latin, I came back to German with fresh eyes and ha almost had epiphanies about the grammar that I was reading mm -hmm. and just had a new understanding of all of all of the other languages that I'd started learning. And um, in addition, the great thing about Latin and ancient Greek is that you're not learning 
the about the people through translation you actually do feel close to the ancients even though they are over 2000 years away so you get a new and greater understanding from those perspectives through the language Wonderful. So a gateway to the past and at the same time, a, a gateway to the linguistic present. Uh, and Margaret, I have to, you know, students in German or, in, or or Russian classes, when they've taken classics, they're they're never intimidated by the grammar. In fact, we usually <laughs> ask them for help. Uh, so th thank you for sharing there. I'm going to move on to study abroad. And happily, Lily already brought us there, brought us to Egypt. But what I wanted to uh, reach out to a couple of students that have already participated in study abroad programs. And we'll start off with a Russian studies minor, Kelly Lifchez, who spent uh, two summers ago at a university in Moscow. Can you tell us a bit about your experience studying abroad uh, in Moscow, Kelly, and also how it affects your career goals and plans? Yes, I would love to. So my uh, freshman year, I had never been out of the country uh, before I came to college. And I also never had any experience with the Russian language, but I knew I wanted to study a critical language. Uh, came in intending to minor in Russian. My first semester, someone from a university in Moscow came to Charleston to speak to our class about a program they were doing teaching Russian as a foreign language at their university. And I said, sign me up immediately. And so the head of our Russian um, program helped me apply and I went by myself. Um, I actually spent the May prior uh, doing a May master in Ghana. So that was my first experience out of the country. But then I went straight from Ghana, then went to Moscow and spent three months there uh, doing coursework for six to eight hours a day. My professor spoke no English. I was living in a dorm in a Russian University, where I actually was roommates with um, a girl from Italy, and she was very nice because she spoke some English, and so she showed me how the uh, laundry, <laughs> the laundry. <really> worked, <laughs> and so that was uh, really important for me. Um, but it was an incredible experience. I, it, if nothing else, it was extremely motivating for me to really like knuckle down and continue learning Russian. Um, the immersion was so important to my future studying the language. I do not think that I would be where I am today had I not done that and had that experience getting to having to talk to people in Russian every day because um, it was more of a necessity than an opportunity at that point. Uh, but yeah, it was great and I am planning a career uh, working in the State Department as an economic officer, particularly focusing on Russia and Eastern Europe. Uh, so this would require me to be able to understand the language and culture of um, you know, the region and Russian is the primary language of the region. And I am hoping to be able to do a lot of research, policy work and diplomatic exchange in Russia uh, in the future. So this is definitely put me on a good trajectory for my career goals. And I am now looking at um, an opportunity to teach English in Russia for a year after I graduate uh, in May uh, through a Fulbright. So all good things. And it all started in Russia after my freshman year. Thank you, that's wonderful. And we now, thanks to Dr. Johnson and my colleague, Dr. Herman in, in, in Russian studies, we now have an MOU with this university in Moscow where we'll be sending students in the future. So Kelly, you got us the beachhead there, thank you. Uh, we'll be sending more. Uh, really a great story and also a great story about how transformative immersive study abroad is. I wanna bring someone else on, German major, uh, German in hospitality and tourism management, Sebastian Estes, studied abroad twice through our programs, once through our internship program to Germany and then the year, the next year on a semester uh, at the University of Tübingen. Uh, could you speak, Sebastian, a bit about what this experience on the ground is like in a foreign country when you're learning a foreign language and how it changes you? I remember that Dr. Seuss says, like, oh, the places you'll go. And that's kind of what the College of Charleston's done for so many of us. And it is the best experience. It's, it's, well, I say that, and it's very cliche, but it's very true. So living on the ground there, my first, I got here freshman year, and I was like, I'm going abroad somewhere or another. And the internship happened. And so it was a summer. I went to Berlin for, um, during the first month. It was a three-month program. First month was intensive language study and the next two months were an internship 
and I was fortunate enough to be placed in a four-star hotel in Germany and being a hospitality major, it was really eye-opening seeing how a different country handles hospitality. And I was like, oh, this is different. They speak to you three times over the course of a meal and they leave you alone. Whereas here in the States, you're like constantly being berated by servers. I was like, oh, so that was just an eye-opening seeing international hospitality and realizing that you might grow up in the U.S., but not everywhere is the same place. You might go to a restaurant, but it's not a restaurant. It's very, it's based in the culture in which you are. And I was like, oh, this is a lot of fun. And just interacting with that. And I came back and I was like, okay, I need to go back again for a semester abroad. And fortunately, we had a, we had a uh, sister like school in Tübingen, the city where I interned at. So I went right back and I was like, hey guys, I'm back. And so it was just... <laughs> <laughs> and so I was able to like work in the hotel again as a catering um, server and I saw all my friends there and it was like also going from interning to living there and like going through the process of um, you know applying for your student visa and then getting your approvals for um, so different countries have very different things so being on the ground in Germany isn't like the U.S. where it's very people do things for you make it streamlined as possible in Germany you have to do things yourself and it's not nine to five Monday through Friday it's 10 to 3 on a Tuesday and a Wednesday, and Sundays will be closed for a holiday you never heard of. So adjusting to international schedules is a lot of fun. And it was just really cool speaking in German and forcing myself. And what people don't talk about with study abroad is coming back to the U.S. with a grander understanding of different people. If you're able to speak in a different language for a large amount of time and interact with people who don't have the same background as you, coming to the U.S., it's so much easier to connect with people you'd have no basis with before and you can like have conversations you wouldn't have had otherwise like if i can talk to the german about you know their thoughts of like the weimar republic and how their economy has shifted over years i can talk with somebody from minnesota about you know their day-to-day -day life and whatever else or like religion and just brings like the repatriation effect it just makes the world that much smaller and also that much your ability to connect with people enhances and so being a hospitality major, for me, is just, I can speak to anybody about anything now, because I've... Yes. <laughs> and a, a good summary there is it, it, studying abroad widens your perspective. It really builds your empathy, but it also enhances your swagger. Uh, and I've seen plenty of students go abroad and be very shy and come back and be really, like, not, not more outgoing when they return. Let's, let's move on to someone else. Thanks, Sebastian. Um, Isabel Del Mastro is a Latin American and Caribbean studies major, double major with Spanish. She spent last spring, or at least two months of last spring, in Argentina at one of our uh, exchange programs. Uh, Isabel, you want to talk a bit about that experience? Yeah, of course. So um, as you just said, I was actually one of the really shy students that went to study abroad in Argentina. Um, it was quite honestly very out of my comfort zone. And for me, every day was very much a challenge, like thinking, oh, I have to wake up and I have to go and talk to somebody at a store. And then I have to go and talk to my host mom in Spanish. And everything was very, very intimidating for me. Um, but just as Sebastian just said, when I came back from Argentina, um, I very much understood what my purpose was in college. Um, I lived with a host family who's, um, with my host brother who very much took his college experience for granted. And um, after sitting down with my host family, talking to them and um, learning about the culture and realizing um, how much bigger the world is than I thought it was when I came back to the United States, I realized that it was pertinent and very important for me to be passionate about my studies. Um, part of the reason why I went to Argentina was because it was a requirement for <laughs> the Latin American and Caribbean studies major. Um, but I came back with a whole skill set on how to communicate with people. Um, I feel more comfortable talking with new people. And it all, all around was just a, a very wonderful and very fulfilling experience. And I probably wouldn't be sitting here with you guys today with this information if I didn't go to Argentina and put myself out there. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, that's, that's fantastic. What was the name of the program? Is specific, where were you specifically in Argentina? Oh, I was in Buenos Aires. So I was in a, a big metropolitan city they call it like the paris of latin america i mean it was very beautiful but you very much feel like you're in new york city mm -hmm. 
wonderful. And and well, it's it's great to hear a story about uh, exactly what I was just talking about. So thanks thanks for sharing, Isabel. We're going to transition now to talking a bit more about professionally specific experiences. Uh, and uh, as you've already seen from Sebastian and I, Isabel, actually, you did an internship this summer on John's Island, right? Uh, that's a good transition. What what did you do this summer specifically? Good question. So I um, worked with Student Action with farm workers this past summer, and it was a wonderful experience. Um, it also gave me a better perspective of what I want to do with my college career. But basically what I did is I worked with the South Carolina Migrant Education Program to provide tutoring sessions for farm workers. A lot of people don't know this, but the majority of the people who like they grow the food and they pick the food and they harvest the food. They are immigrants from Latin America. Um, and through the internship, I was again, able to better my Spanish, able to learn about where the food that is grown and that we buy at the grocery stores comes from. Um, and yeah, and it deepened my passion for the Spanish language and communicating with people. That's a great story. And um... Thank you, Isabel. I'm going to move on to uh, our next our next speaker. Um, Tyree Woodbury is a double major in African American Studies and English, uh, and I wanted to ask you, Tyree, about your experiences with internships and also extracurricularly at the College of Charleston, and uh, how that's intersected with your interests in in languages cultures. Um, so I currently have an um, internship over the summer coming up, where I'm going to be like helping new coming minorities come to the college, you know, preparing for college, um, and just getting them used to like what college would be like for underrepresented minorities. And um, just having both of those um, majors just kind of like, it broadens the intersectionality of like, the medium of Af African American studies and how we use it to like represent ourselves and other people. And so it's just a cool thing to um, see, like um, now for my capstone, I'm yeah. doing a comic book um, about African-American studies. So just like exploring that medium and just seeing like how far language and, you know, um, other forms of the medium, uh, media just kind of reaches out to people. So, yeah. Could you tell us more about the Capstone Project? This is specifically uh, your senior thesis, right? A comic book you're working on. What's the yeah. topic? Um, so it's about um, mental health and policing, um, just kind of exploring that aspect of like how that kind of affects um, communities and, you know, just seeing like what effect it would have. Um, so yeah, it's just gonna be some little quirky thing that I'm trying to write, just kind of show a different perspective basically. Excellent, and, and Tyree, you're working with um, with the Spectra program this summer, helping students that are coming in, but you also almost did a study abroad program. Could you talk a bit about that, the, the program yeah. in Jamaica you were gonna go on before it got canceled? So yeah, the Jamaican study abroad, that was gonna be like, um, everybody was gonna go there and kind of help Jamaican students, some um, young kids in middle school, kind of give them the tools to kind of represent their own stories, their own histories, and like, just give them their very own cultures, like their view of it, you know, besides kind of like, you know, it was more of build, building them up. And I was excited about it. So excited to see Jamaica, but as always, yeah. Next up, it'll happen, it'll happen. Thanks, thanks for sharing Tyree. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on to Gabrielle Carter. Uh, with international studies uh, and ask if you could start talk a bit about uh, your extracurricular experiences here in LCWA, starting with the Global Scholars Program. I know that you're a member of that, um, Gabrielle. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm Gabrielle. Um, I'm actually double majoring in anthropology and international studies. And I actually got involved with Global Ambassadors because um, through mm -hmm. international studies, I was a part of um, our Model UN simulation here at CFC. And then I actually joined our Model UN course and was became super interested in diplomacy and policy work and what that looked like. Um, and a great segue into that was through the Global Ambassadors Program, which is a program that we have on campus. Actually, Kelly's also part of it. Um, and we work with um, former ambassador Melville, Jim Melville, um, and he, Works. I think there's like eight or nine of us and we get together every Wednesday night and um, get to talk about world affairs. We have keynote speakers who come in. Um, we write briefings each week um, about what's going on in the world. We kind of choose a region that we find interesting um, or a topic that we find interesting and we get to follow that throughout the semester. Um, so it's a really amazing program that I've really benefited from throughout the whole year. 
So Ambassador Melville is our associate dean here in the college and you take this course with them over the course of a year. So you're writing briefings like you're at an embassy or like you're working for the State Department, you're reporting to the ambassador. Uh, yes, yes. And I was super intimidated by it at first because I had no experience whatsoever and what that looked like. Um, but I feel like I have this whole new skill set of what briefing looks like um, if I were to decide to go into the State Department or Foreign Service um, or diplomacy in any aspect, briefing is a huge part of that. Um, and so really getting to do this in practice each week um, and sending it to an ambassador, I mean, it's really such an incredible experience. So if anybody has any questions, I would love to answer more about that. Thank you. That's, that's a great example, Gabrielle, of how in our school we tie languages and cultures to real world skills. And, and we're very much about that. And a, a department that is also a great example of that is our archaeology program, interdisciplinary archaeology program at the College of Charleston. And we have Maggie Berlin here with us, who's a archaeology major. Could you talk a bit about your extracurricular and internship experience at the college? Um, yes, sir. So interestingly enough, and to be an archaeology major, you have to double up on something, and that wasn't good enough for me. So I'm I'm tripled up. I'm a triple major, um, and I'm on top of that. I'm a student athlete, so I'm on the women's soccer team. So I, I have a, a full plate to say the least. And um, I I originally came into college really interested in, in the maritime scene. I wanted to be a maritime archaeologist. So. I doubled up with history because I had a ton of high school credits coming in and I got an internship, like more of a volunteership at the Hunley. Oh, wow. And it was very, very cool. The, the man in charge was a, a former graduate of the archaeology anthropology program. So it was very connected and I really enjoyed it. And the next semester I worked with per, Professor Newhard working with the Center for Historic Landscapes out at New Morris Plantation and I did an entire property history, like a 65 page report and it was eye opening, very, very cool. And then I kind of shifted thinking that, you know, to, to be successful, you know, possibly living in Charleston, I, I need to, you know, there's not, there's a, there's the markets flooded in archaeology and, and history. So I moved on to historic preservation because I, I love the city I born and raised here. So I took the intro class and crushed it. And I was like, I, lo I love it. So I had an internship last summer in preserving historic buildings. And I loved it. A lot of hard work. I'm not, a fr you know, I like getting down dirty. And then I have another internship currently. So it's, it's been a lot. So is, is, uh, is you'll be, you already have four uh, hands on internships in your fields of study. Uh, under your belt uh, in your, is this your last semester here at the college or you have another year? Yes, sir. I graduate in May and it is, uh, it's a push. Four years, three majors, four interesting internships that are tied to your areas of study. Thanks. And, I mean, I think I unfortunately haven't had the opportunity with uh, taking a class with Professor Harris, but he is my advisor and fantastic guy, always available. And, and we actually, Coincidentally enough, the my capstone historic preservation project is Six Bull Street is the property we're doing the first archaeological excavation mm -hmm. at the school at that you know in the backyard of that property. So I coincidentally had amazing background knowledge and I got to to get my hands in the dirt and it's just incredible. We live in an amazing place. Was that a cistern you found when I was there the other day? Yes, sir, the, the cistern, and you can see this like kind of archway in the, the concrete top caved in. Professor Harris and another uh, professor. Newhart was there too, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. and uh, Dr. Gilmore, and they found that they, they built a 3D model, and I'm sure uh, Professor Harris would love to talk about that another time. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Thank you, Maggie. This Excellent. is really Excellent. exciting. And I just wanted to, I hope that our, our listeners in the audience, if you have access to the chat, you are chatting also and following up. Each of our student guests could answer all four of the questions. Uh, we've moved through nine. We have three more and we're going to move into, I mentioned that because we're moving into how do you think your studies will help you in your career? A lot of our, I mean, all of our students are thinking about different ways to combine uh, their interests with an international career goal with another field of study. Some of them are even triple majors like Maggie, uh, and a lot of them are double majors. Um, so we'll move on to that question and ask Riley Taylor, who's a double major in Spanish and communications, if he could tell us a bit about his uh, 
his career goals and how his studies are aligning with them here at the college. So, I mean, this is, this is kind of the bread and butter when it comes to college. You want to know uh, when you study something, what it's going to do to prepare you for the future, for your career after four years or however much time. So what is really beneficial about what I was able to be a part of in the Hispanic studies department is, you know, you come in, alert, I, I came in as a Spanish, you know, knowing I was going to be a Spanish major. And I think, okay, I'm going to become a master of the language. But then you learn that there are various parts that the department exposes you to, whether it's culture, society, how to communicate in a business realm, uh, linguistics, literature, films, the past, the present, the people. And so you get a, a glimpse of the entire realm that it means around a language, not just speaking it, but what it, what it means to be a speaker. Um, and through all of that, and th I need to say this because a lot of people, obviously, when you're a language major, you study abroad. And there are very few cases, and I am one of them, where I have not studied abroad. So my entire experience has been here in the city of Charleston. But no matter that, I am extremely confident in my reading, writing, oral Spanish skills, um, in my entire knowledge of Spanish is a global language. Uh, and through that, you know, it, I... I can say that I feel more than prepared. I'm about to do a international virtual internship this summer, uh, which will give me that hands-on experience uh, to, to communicate. Obviously, it's virtual, but to communicate completely in Spanish with a company uh, abroad. So through my time here at the College of Arts, I, it, they've just given you a, a well-rounded experience and a well-rounded knowledge set. Uh, and tying that into communication, each, each department just knows how to prepare you to be uh, successful in the workforce. So in saying that, they all know what the end goal is. They all know where the jobs are, and they prepare you to get there. Yes. Thank, thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that, Riley. Um, well, we'll I, I think Connor Corpus will have more to say about this issue. Connor is taking Chinese. He's taking through Chinese 202, and he's a supply chain major uh, in, at the College of Charleston. Connor, can you talk about your goals? And, and before you start talking, I have to concede that when I saw that you're a supply chain in your second year of Chinese, my eyes kind of poked out like it was like I was in a cartoon, like uh, with excitement. Uh, tell us a bit about your goals and, and how Chinese is playing a role in that. I think exactly. So, you know, as a supply chain manager, uh, management major, excuse me, what I'm most concerned with right now and where I want to take my career is either in the purchasing or uh, logistics kind of size supply chain and, you know, dealing with Asia, which has the largest production capacity in the world right now, it, you know, kind of the easy answer is I, I need to be able to communicate and I need to be able to kind of get, uh, get in these situations and have, uh, build these relationships and build these dialogues. And, uh, upon entering the College of Charleston um, and choosing my major, I, I think I identified that uh, Asia was the, my intended area of study, and that's what I wanted to get into. Um, but what I think what started me just as a goal just to be able to communicate really kind of uh, took off. And what you find here, especially at the College of Charleston with these kind of smaller classes, you really have the opportunity to engage uh, with your teachers and get a full understanding. I think that Riley touched on it to where uh, language at the College of Charleston isn't just focused on learning language. It's about understanding that cultural aspect and really understanding kind of the region that you're getting into. So at the with the Chinese program, I'm, I'm very lucky because we have Professor Shuai and Professor uh, Jin who are native speakers, but also get taught by Professor Givis, who um, kind of like some of us was not a cultural or heritage speaker, but kind of uh, found a passion for Asian studies and pursued that on his own. So with that, you get to have this classroom experience with some native speakers who really help you understand the idiosyncrasies of the culture and the language, but at the same time, get to be taught by Professor Gibbis, who has gone through kind of what we're going through and being new to a language and really diving in. So um, from that, I, I truly feel like I'm, no, I'm not only getting a communication and being able to communicate with other people, but also kind of understanding how things work. And um, as someone in supply chain, as someone who relationship building is going to be very, uh, very pertinent and very important to my relationship, understanding how, how to greet people, how my body language is interpreted and stuff that's important to them that necessarily being from a Western society isn't as important. It's, it's mind blowing. And, and, and it's uh, something that I've really truly enjoyed. And I really can't stress enough uh, how grateful I am to have 
being able to engage with native speakers, but also people who aren't getting both sides, getting both sides of the coin kind of, and understanding, uh, getting it from both sides has been truly beneficial. And, uh, you know, I kind of like Riley said, I truly feel prepared. And I also feel confident um, going forward for these next steps and being able to kind of engage with these uh, different people and engage with different communities and just, you know, very excited and very grateful for the experience I've had here. Thank you. And, 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 and thank you also for jumping on my hobby horse, which is thinking about business and the importance of foreign language for working in business. Uh, Connor, you know, what you're saying resonates with my conversations with uh, industry leaders in German. I always, they, you know, they always say, well, we, they always speak English pretty well. They're international business people, right? But I always ask, well, would it, would it matter if, like, if I speak your native language? And, the, and of course, eventually they concede, yes, it would. I mean, where do the decisions get made? Where does trust get built? Uh, is really critical for that, and but also for upper, upper mobility when you get into the country a company. And another thing about our classes, if, if I may say in LCWA, is you know your professors so well in LCWA that they advocate you for you vis-a-vis -vis these businesses. They often know contacts at the businesses, uh, and they're aware that you're looking. And so uh, sometimes it could be the Chinese professor that that has the connection uh, to supply chain that your supply chain professor doesn't and then something starts down that route. Along that same note we also have connections to education throughout the state and the region and um, we have with us a French and education double major Abigail uh, Fillion who is uh, going to speak now about her professional goals and how she's been prepared to be a teacher here at the College of Charleston. Abigail you're up. Uh, so to to teach French, I would hope I know a little bit about it, and I would hope <laughs> I know a bit of it. Um, so learning French at the college has been very very important uh, for my education to teach it very soon. Um, I actually came into college as an elementary ed major, but when I got here, I realized that I really didn't want to um, stop learning the French language, and like Riley had said learning everything that surrounds the language, the culture, the people, the literature. And I wanted to really focus on that. So being able to have that foreign language education degree where I'm certified K to 12, that was just the best of both worlds. Um, so I've gotten a lot of valuable teaching experience at the college through the tutoring center in the Center for Student Learning um, at the college. I've been a French tutor for about a year and a half. And I've worked with students of all levels new students who come in just once or twice. And I have uh, regular students that I see once or twice a week ever since I started, um, which has been, it's really exposed me to, to a lot of different experiences when it comes to teaching different levels and having different teaching strategies. And um, with that, I've been learning in my edu education classes about how important it is to have great student to teacher relationships in the classroom to really enhance your learning. And I feel like the professors in the French department have really modeled that well for me. Um, and it, it's really just exposed me to, you know, how I want to teach in the future. One professor, of course, Dr. Morrison, she, she's on the call tonight. She's my advisor. I've had her twice for um, two different French classes one for my education class, and she'll be overseeing my student teaching experience in the fall. So I owe her a lot. Um, since then, I have taken on other French teaching and tutoring opportunities outside of CFC, the most recent being in February when I volunteered to teach a group of students from all over the country and a few from all all over the world um, who were ages like six to 14, um, just an online French, te French teaching experience, which was really, really awesome. And um, I started teaching as a substitute for Charleston County uh, where I bother about, you know, all the French teachers I can, I can manage to meet um, whenever I get to sub around the, around the area. So I've had a lot of um, French and teaching intersections that I'm really grateful for at the college. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you, Abigail. And something I would add is all of your professors here at the College of Charleston, regardless of what language you have, if you're going into foreign language education, we know the teachers in the area, we, we create the connections, and we're all teachers. So we're stumbling over ourselves to help our education majors that are that are working on teaching a foreign language. Uh, I hope that that covers it. Thank you, Abigail. But we've, we've gone through all 12. I hope you've been communicating with, with all the students out there on your own. But I wanted to sort of summarize this by saying that we you, you, tonight you've seen a spectrum of sort of different interests ranging from teaching to supply chain management. Uh, um, 
And I think at, the, at LCWA, we made very clear tonight that regardless of your interest, there's a place for you here and it's gonna open unexpected doors. And it's a great place for, as our study abroad folks said, tremendous personal growth and expanding your view of the world while also sort of creating exciting professional opportunities. And with that, I wanna open it up to our audience for any questions, you can type them in the chat or you're welcome to turn on your mic. I'm gonna go back into Brady Bunch mode here so I can see around. But if anyone has any questions of our panelists, or of the professors, please jump in and, and ask. While you were thinking, let me just add here that we do have a Spanish house and a French house if you're interested in, in being in those situations. Um, and where you speaking the language and living with um, colleagues, that would be a great opportunity and we do have those available too. That's right, Abigail says asking the first question is always the hardest, but the chat will make it easier. Does anyone have a particular language they're interested in or culture? Or international studies or African studies? Then um, Yaron Ilon is the director of Jewish studies. Yaron, could you tell us a little bit about Marty's place? Yes, absolutely. So, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, we in Jewish studies do a lot of things that uh, most programs don't do. And that just lends itself very well to how great LCWA is as, as a place. So. Uh, we operate the restaurant. That's one of the things that uh, most uh, academic programs don't do. Uh, and it's called uh, Marty's Place. It's uh, a, a vegan, vegetarian, and also kosher uh, dining hall. Uh, right before COVID started, it was actually the most popular dining hall for students by, by volume of sales. Um, I, I can't tell you what it is right now. You know, things change, but I'm sure it'll come back to being that. Um, we get uh, to affect the menu that they serve as well. So uh, it's very exciting and uh, it's, uh, our students really love it. And uh, whatever you end up doing, you should come hang out in our building. We have a, a very nice facility and we welcome everyone. Great, great. And I tell you what, what other school and Jewish studies operates their own restaurant for the college? That's great. Um, we have a question to, from Lacey Mullins. This is for our archeology span folks. Lacey asks, I want to study archaeology. It's a great question, but I'm not sure if I want to have archaeology as my major or minor. How would you talk about that? Our archaeology. Um, yes. Tonight? So archaeology is extremely interdisciplinary and you are required to have two majors. So um, if you do get an archaeology major, you'll have another major. Um, the nice thing is when you have another major, getting the archaeology major is fairly straightforward. Um, getting a minor is absolutely fine as well, um, but the archaeology major really, because it's so interdisciplinary, whatever your other, and do you have an idea what, your, um, what other major you might be interested in? Because we have 10 of them to choose from across four different schools, not just LCWA. So it, there's a lot of opportunity there to pick and choose. And if you're in another school, then you might actually be able to use your gen eds across the programs. And so it, it actually works out very well for the students. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Um, history was actually what I was trying to decide between either archaeology or history or both. So I was trying to decide. Well, I, I can chime into that. Like I'm not in history capstone right now and I know my I actually had the opportunity to do my archaeology capstone May semester of my freshman year in a field school out at Stono Preserve the college actually inherited this massive piece of property out um, down the river up 17 down 17 and it's gorgeous and I got to spend two weeks out there and I completed my capstone right then and there and it was been like fantastic but i'm doing my history capstone now and it's it's just a whole different bear to tackle and i think the double major is the way to go because 
you can double dip so easily and all the classes overlap. And I, that's the only way I was able to accomplish becoming a triple major is, is all of the classes intermingle and I've in my internships counted as credits across the board and I mean and perf a lot of professors were able to work with me and they knew the other professors and I got a lot of uh, overrides and, and it and I've you know I've had a lot of help along the way but I think that's the way to go. Thank you. Great great to have you tonight Lacey. Any other questions? We're about at the end of seven at seven, but if you have any other questions, please pop them into the chat. Here's a great question. How many languages are you allowed to study at Charleston? That's from Gabe. That's a good question for uh, Sophia Carrillos. Sophia, okay. Sophia, do you want to give us the answer? <laughs> Sophia, yeah, so where I'm, are you at? Not right here. <laughs> So I currently major in German and I double minor in Japanese studies and Spanish. So really the possibilities are endless and you can mix and match however you want. Um, as long as the minors don't exceed the majors, like there's a, a, a limit to how many majors and minors you can take. But as, as long as a language has a ma minor or major, you are able to take it. And like me, I'm, I'm just, you know, combining all three of my love, love, love for languages. <laughs> That's great. Now, Margaret, Mar Margaret Daly popped in too here, Sophie. She's, of course, she has Latin and Greek. I heard her say German. What's the other one, Margaret? I'm doing an independent study currently with um, Dr. Allwine for Old English as well. For Old so English, just for sport. I, yeah, just, just for fun. I figured to get some modern languages and their ancient equivalents. So I'm up to four languages at the college currently. So it really is, is how many you can fit and however many you want. <laughs> so, Margaret, were, were things getting too easy for you with, with, with the Greek language? I decided to make it harder. <laughs> it, was, it was a personal choice. <laughs> May I step in very quickly as the associate dean who deals with the language requirement here. Um, as long as you take 202 in one language, you can take as many other languages as you want. But you can't take 101 of this, 101 of that, 101, right? That, so just that one little Debbie Downer remark, sorry. Well, it's probably not a Debbie Downer remark, um, Sean, because somebody that's going to take that many is going to be in 202 and 1. I can't imagine them not doing that, but you're right. That has to be done. Well, I tell you what, we've reached the end of our time, but I want you to get a second to look in the chat because here's an important detail. The students that are in the chat, and especially, of course, also the chairs and program directors, and myself, and Associate Dean Morrison, would really like to hear from you and be able to answer your questions. So if you didn't get to ask a question tonight, or you want to you sit on the information for a while, or you're visiting another place and you have a question for us, please email us and contact us. We'll be glad, we'll be very happy, okay, to address your questions. And I tell you what, LCWA is a fantastic place, not just to study, but in study, but Morgan was right at the beginning. It's fun, it's fun to learn like this, all right? Learning and discovery can be a joyful, wonderful thing. And I think it certainly is in the School of Languages, Cultures, and World Affairs. Thank you for joining us tonight. It's been great to meet you and have you choose to share some time with us tonight. And we hope you have a great remainder of the evening. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Bye, so everybody. Much. Good afternoon. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, everybody. Thank you.